Hi, this is Kareen Carpino, and today we're going to make an abstract landscape. I just put some raspberry ranger ink and now some honeycomb and adding some alcohol ink blending solution um, to my graphics opaque uh, Durabrite white paper. And I'm just rocking the paper back and forth. Just moving those inks around a little bit. Add a little bit more blending solution. And it's not moving down as much as I'd like, so I'm going to take a coffee stir and just gently run it across the page to start to move the ink a little. And I'm gonna let that ink move by itself as it dries and create its own abstract sky. Next, I'm gonna take a little bit of stream ink and just create a funky mountainside in the background. I'm gonna use some um, Ranger Inks um, alloy. This is Foundry and just add it right along the top of my mountain. And I'm watching it move. And with the alloys, we need to use blending solution to get that metallic to move. So I'll add some blending solution and I just love how the metallics start to move around but I do want that background to be darker, so I'll just add some more of the stream ink. And when I'm doing an intuitive um, an abstract landscape like this, it is quite intuitive. Um, so I'm just watching where the ink's going and then deciding where, what my next step will be. So I'm watching the ink move around. I'm gonna tip the paper back up to kind of pull some of it up again. I'm watching where the, the alloy is moving. That's the metallic in it. And the ink is drying fairly quickly today. So now I'm just gonna take that coffee stir again and just kind of carve into the inks and move them around a little bit and create a nice soft landing here in front of these mountains. Got a little bit of light in that. And now I wanna bring some of the sky color down, but I do have to be careful I don't get mud. So I'll try to keep that raspberry from not going into the green too much. Again, using that straw. And I want a little bit of that orange color from the sky, from the yellow and um, raspberry mixing so I'll bring some of that down and I'm mixing pretty carefully I don't want to create too much mud a little bit of brown's okay but not too much mud next step is I'm adding stream along the bottom and this time um, I've decided to use a little piece of a cut up um, credit card or key card to just move that ink around I want to pull that mountain color into the foreground And notice so far I haven't used a paintbrush. Okay, because the inks are drying fast, um, I wasn't able to get a lot of texture. You can see I can't really get a lot of texture. So I'm gonna put a little bit more ink on. And now I'm going to move it around again with the key side of the key card. And this time, because I have some wet ink, I can create some texture in the foreground just by wiggling that key card around. Now this painting um, could stand um, on its own. It really doesn't need anything else. Uh, if you're someone who likes a, a painting that's completely abstract, um, I'm going to today add a tree to this 
And so now I am going to use my paintbrush. I'm going to use a number two liner brush. It has nice long bristles. I can do thin lines. And I'm going to use some pitch black ink as if the tree is silhouetted against this sunsetty or moon kind of moon glow. Let's call it a moon glow background. Um, and so just getting that liner brush, figuring out where do I want to put the tree. I, I'm choosing to put it on the right because I want to uh, preserve that mountain look on the left. And actually, I want to frame it. Um, with the tree. So I'm just going to start to make some lines and kind of sketch this in a little bit. And we'll make another one and this will be an upward branch. I'm doing the branches first as opposed to the trunk first. It'll help me kind of see uh, where I want the trunk to be. And now you can see I've got the pitch black, Ranger pitch black ink in my um, brush and I'm just starting to fill in uh, where the trunk's gonna be. And I'll bring it right down into that blue green foreground area um, so that it looks grounded. It's not floating. Now you can see I'm having a little bit of trouble covering up this um, alloy here. Um, because as I put the pitch black on, it is reactivating it and it wants to mix in with it. Um, so I'm just going to have to carefully continue to work that area. Just now making uh, more of the trunk, a little bit wider branch coming out of that little trunk. Another branch coming up and over. You can see them again, starting with the trunk and then coming out. And I'm keeping this kind of abstract too, just something fun and kind of funky. I'm kind of, I'm just, I know I'm looking at this painting and, and assessing where things are. I'm going to put a moon in or a sun or something. Um, so I'm holding that paper down flat um, and I'm just tapping um, alcohol or the blending solution in the middle here and hoping I, it will continue to uh, move out in a nice uh, even circle. Now it's humid here today and as that alcohol pushed the inks back, I know it's hard for you to see, but there's kind of a little crust around the edge of the moon and I'm not crazy about that. Um, so I'm going to try to clean that out a little bit. So I'm going to use a Q-tip with a little bit of alcohol on it um, and just wipe it around in the middle there and clean it out. And there you have it, um, a pretty little alcohol ink painting. Um, this was in real time, so I was able to paint this in about 10 minutes. Um, it would look really pretty like on the front um, of a greeting card. It's four by six inches. So I followed the what the ink gave me. And as you can see, I was really able to take that glow from the sky, bring it down into uh, in front of the mountains, into uh, the green kind of mid ground, and then into the um, closer to the foreground as well with the yellow. So the placement of the moon was so that the light is shining down into that area. Please subscribe to see more alcoholic painting techniques.